Well, let's talk about Pascal Siakam. Like I said, I think the criticism has gone a little too far. Like I brought up two years ago, um, this in the season two years ago, he uh, was amazing, as good as as Randall was this past year. Um, and then he he hurt his groin in like February, March, right before the shutdown. And he was never really the same for the few weeks after that. And then the shutdown happened five months off. No one had access to uh, f- NBA facilities, but he had access to like no facilities. He said he didn't dribble a basketball for five months or three months or whatever. Yeah. And then the bubble happens. He was horrible in the bubble. But like we've talked about before, he's a guy who feeds off crowd energy um, and being in that bubble could not have been good for him. And I also don't think it's fair to judge anyone's physical or mental state at in August of 2020. Like I, we just, yeah. it's not fair anyone in the world. Um, and then short turnaround to this net upcoming or this past season, not playing in Toronto, no fans in Tampa. Uh, we don't know how his conditioning was because it was a short turnaround and then gets COVID loses 15 pounds and then uh, hurts shoulder his shoulder. Injury. So yeah. his shooting was horrible last year, but that's partly due to that shoulder injury. Uh, but he still put up a 21, seven and four and a half mm-hmm. when, uh, when he's fully healthy, he's getting to 23 points pretty easily. He's playing really yeah. good team defense. He's shooting 35, 36% from three. He's uh, yeah. scoring in the paint, scoring in transition, just being a really high energy player, obviously asking him to create shots in the half court from the perimeter is not his strong suit, but we've seen yeah. other guys like Giannis, even in the playoffs get exposed with stuff like that. So yeah. I think it's gone a little too far. I think when he is back and fully healthy, hopefully they just let him completely heal from the surgery, bring him back. Even if it's like January, just bring him back then. Uh, yeah. I think he's going to be back to being like a 23, seven and, and five guy. I, I really do. Yeah. So he's expected to be back mid November. So five months from uh, his June injury, uh, June surgery, I mean, and he was a 20. Yeah. Like you said, he was a 27, uh, 21, seven and 4.5 assist guy still with a shoulder injury and losing 15 pounds from COVID. So he's definitely going to improve significantly this next coming year. And he's going to have actual like minute help. Like he doesn't need to be on the court 20 for seven, right? Yeah. You have Boucher, you have Barnes. So someone that could, you know, you could minute manage him for the first couple months while he's, you know, coming back from that injury. And he's going to be huge for the Raptors. Uh, he's the key to holding them like, pushing them into that playoff race because when he's back you have another 20 point score and the offense is going to be so much better uh people underestimate him i think if you don't have him in the top 10 you're crazy oh, yeah like we're talking about seven and five like he's easily a top 10 power forward uh, he's still all-star caliber he's still all nba caliber and that i think front offices realize that right because that's why so yep, much front offices exactly. are interested in him. That's why so much uh, our front office is interested in him. That's why I think Raptors fans realize how good he is. You know, his game, his shooting, and, like, his playmaking. And like we said, energy. I think that's what people don't realize. Like, players feed off energy, positive energy and stuff like that. Playing in Toronto, when the crowd's cheering for you finally, after, what, 600 days? 600 days since they played in ACC, so... Yeah. When the, he's playing in Toronto, feeding off that crowd energy, feeding off that excitement, he's going to be a lot better. And he's going to be, I, I think he's going to be better than his 22.9 that he averaged in 2019 20. I think he could easily be a 24, pushing 25 point scoring. And I think that's what he will be for the Raptors next year. I just question his rebounding because with Birch, he's going to have to take that rebounding jump because right now he's a consistent, like, 6.9, 7.3, and 7.2, right? So he's a consistent like 7.7 7 rebounds a game. Maybe he makes a jump there too, but we got to see. He's going to have a big year, and this is his year to jump back into that like Tatum conversation, right? Top five, yeah. top four, top three conversation. So I hope he does it, man. As a Raptors fan, I hope he does it, and I feel like he can. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm with you on that. I, he's not gonna be, he's not gonna make the All Star team because he's gonna miss too much time early. Too in the much season. time, yeah. He's not gonna make the All NBA team, but that actually might be good for him. Just not have to worry about that, and like not have to. Yeah. Like, oh, I have no to pressure. get back to being an All Star this year, right? Just, yeah. just play his game, and I, I think he's gonna be better than two years ago. Like, I wouldn't be shocked with 25 points a game. Like, I think, yeah. I, I honestly would not be shocked. Um, like the playmaking jump too last year, as much of a down year as it was for him, and it was a down year. 
we saw a really big playmaking jump, just making really good passes, feeding his teammates for for threes and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, even playmaking in transition. When he's back to being fully conditioned, gaining that 15 pounds back, and he's actually able to score inside and be more aggressive and play with that energy we know he can play with uh, when he gets his physical self back, I think I think we're going to see a much better season and, and uh, a, an all-NBA caliber season uh, this year. Yeah. I think he's still a star. Yeah, and the thing for him this year is he's going to sit out like little first part, so he's going to know his exact role, right? He's going to know, all oh, this team needs a little more playmaking. This team needs a little more yeah. post work. This team needs a little more help on the rebounding end. This mm-hmm. team needs a a, a 2B defender, you know, then alongside OG and Barnes. And, you know, this team kind of needs a small ball five help to close the game. He's going to know all his, like, bullet points right. of what he needs to bring in for this season for the team to be successful. Uh, he is one of the leaders this year. I know everyone's just pushing it on to Freddie, but it is also going to be Siakam. Like, those are the two guys who were there for the championship run, who played major roles for the championship run. Obviously, OG was there too, but he was injured during that playoff run. So, you know, those are the championships. Those are the guys who are there. Uh, those are the guys who have that success, who know what it takes, who knows what sacrifices they need to make. And they also understand that, hey, this Barnes kid, this Flynn off the bench, these guys have to play important roles like we played for Lowry and Kawhi for us to be successful. So they're going to know how to motivate them and, you know, get their heads into the game and stuff like that. So hmm. this Raptors team is going to be a lot better than people expect, and they could easily be in that 8-7 range. Yeah, and that that's a very good point because although although Barnes or some people are thinking Barnes being drafted is like a replacement or a redundancy yeah. uh, position wise, it might be a good thing uh, for Pascal because when he took on first option responsibilities, he obviously took yeah. a step back as being an on ball defender. So if he can not even be guarding the best power forward or the or the second best power or uh, wing on the team. And Barnes yeah. can take that responsibility at some point in the season. And Pascal can just be almost like a Giannis type free safety, uh, just kind of doing his thing and playing with energy. Yeah. It might be really good for him. And maybe that conditioning is uh is is a lot better, you know, as the season goes on. Yeah, and I think Barnes could close at that center yeah. spot, right? Six nine with a seven two wingspan, who's already pushing two forty. Like he could definitely close at that center spot and we could see a closing lineup of Freddie, Gary Trent Jr., OG, Siakam, and then Barnes closing at that center spot. That team's just going to switch everything, be super energetic. And, like, the media is discounting them. Like, other families are discounting them. But you know organizations and players aren't discounting them. We know they kind of put their respect on the Raptors. And it's going to be a fun season to come, man. Yeah. The amount of different looks defensively that they can throw at teams is going to be insane. Like, they imagine that lineup you said with those three wings, but put in like Utah watching Mabe and or Boucher or something like that. You can yeah. literally have four guy, five guys between six, seven and and six eleven that can switch everything and, and pretty much all shoot, all dribble pass. Yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be really, really fun to see. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here so you never miss the best clips from Stretch the Floor. Hit the links in the description below to find us on all podcast platforms. And follow us on Instagram.